first week of Advent, and there are four candles lit. Did we do it wrong? Not at all. This year, we are going to be focusing on the work of quieting and silencing in order to listen for God's voice. We begin with all of the lights lit, then each week we will quiet another candle to illustrate our goal of focusing and listening for God with us, Emmanuel. God of hope, we are going to listen for you as we start this new church year. Help us to quiet all the other sounds and commotion around us and listen only for you as we wait in hope for the day when we will celebrate your incarnation. God, it seems like it started even earlier this year. All the ads and the decorations, the special songs and the movies on TV. The sound of the season is deafening. This year, we want to quiet the input a little more each week until we hear your word speaking. Please be patient with us as we try to listen for your spirit's voice. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel. You led Joseph like a flock. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Let your face shine that we might be saved. Creator God, restore our hope even when we can't hear you. Sometimes it seems like you are far away. Give us hope that you are present in every bit of your creation, every flower, every animal, every single person. Help us to listen in the silence. Christ, restore our hope even when there is so much chatter that we struggle to hear which voice is yours. Give us hope that we can help one another. You are invited into a time of silence as we extinguish our last candle of Advent. Take a deep breath. And exhale slowly. Cleanse the thoughts of 
of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from our unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. By the glory of your holy name, amen.
Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. May we have eyes to see you and ears to hear you. Come into our world today. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us share a sign of peace and welcome with one another. Together, let us pray our prayer of the day. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come. Protect us by your strength and save us from the threatening dangers of our sins. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our scripture readings are coming to us today from the short kids and Megan. Our first lesson is from the 64th chapter of Isaiah, verses 1 through 9. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood, and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down the mountains, quaked at your presence. From ages past no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you, who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in, in your ways, but you were angry, and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we, tra we, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls your name or attempts to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our father, and we are clay, and you are a potter. We are... We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. Here ends our reading. Our psalm today is Psalm 80, verses 1 through 7 and 16 through 18. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph, like a flock, shine forth, you that are enthroned up on the cherubim. In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh, stir up your strength, come to help us. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved, O Lord, God of hosts. How long will you be angered despite the prayers of your people? Have you fed them with the bread of tears? You have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors, and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts, show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Let your hand be upon the man of your right hand, the son of man you have made so strong for yourself. And so will we never turn away from you. Give us life that we may call up on your name. Restore us, O Lord, God of hosts, show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. The second reading is from the first chapter of Corinthians. Verses 3-9, through nine, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I, have, I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given to you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among, us, <clears throat> among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing, reveling of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you are called into fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. He ends our reading. Glory to you, O Lord. 
Jesus said, in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. And the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in heaven will be shaken. They will see, they will then see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great glory and power. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near. At the very gates, truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will not pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, who knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, with his, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come in, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cock crow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I love Christmas, but sometimes I get kind of sad because I think people forget why we're celebrating. Um, you know, I love the Christmas trees and the tinsel and all the decorations and stuff. As a matter of fact, one of my favorite things to do is to put up my nativity. Now, if you guys were here with me today, I would ask you for your help putting it out. I love my nativity because it reminds me about why we're celebrating. So, I know you guys know the Christmas story, and you know that Jesus was born in a stable, so we need to find a home for our stable. Where do you think we should put it? I think maybe we'll put our stable over here. And then the animals go in the stable. So, let's see, ooh, yeah. starting their journey. So we need to find a place to put them. Come with me. I think Mary and Joseph will start back here. They are just getting ready to go on their journey to Bethlehem. Okay? And then who else is part of the nativity? The wise men. Do you know how long it took the wise men to get to Bethlehem? A really, really long time. They had to follow that star. And it was the wise men and their camel. So I think those guys will start over here in the far east. Okay, so we got our wise men over here. It might seem kind of silly to, um, to do this, but each week we are going to work to bring all of our people closer to the manger in Bethlehem. I hope and I pray that during this holiday season you can remember why it is we're celebrating. We're anticipating the birth of baby Jesus. Each week we will talk about what the candles on our Advent wreath mean, and this week it is hope. I hope to see you all soon. Blessings and amen. What do we know of suffering? Are we suffering now in a time where so many things have changed and so much feels uncertain? Is this what suffering feels and looks like? I have seen firsthand many lives being filled with the darkness rather than light. It is hard to hold on to our hope 
when everything we love so deeply feels like it's been stripped away from us. I'm standing here in an empty church, while well, you are all miles away. Right now, six feet sounds pretty darn good. As I was contemplating the beginning of this Advent season, I acknowledge that it will not be the same as it has been in the past. Families gathered around the Advent wreath, lighting the candles and sharing the liturgy, having the Sunday school kids working on their Christmas program, practicing their lines and their songs so that they can perform it for us. So many of the things that we have done, that we have always done, will not be done this year. Families gathering together, craft shows, cookie exchanges, Christmas parties, the list goes on and on and on. The list of things that once felt daunting to do has now shifted to a list of things we wished we could do again. It appears to be getting harder to keep our hope alive. Now, I love the etymology of words. So when I looked up Advent, I found that Advent is the Latin word for coming. During this season, we are preparing for what is coming. In modern days, we are typically spending this season the entire time celebrating. Did you know that that is not how it was observed originally? There was very little connection between Advent and Christmas. In fact, Christians would spend all of the days in prayer, in penance and fasting, in preparation for the celebration. That sounds more like Lent. It, had, it wasn't until the 6th century that Advent had been tied to the coming of Christ. And to begin with, it was tied to the second coming, where Jesus was coming to judge the world. And then in the Middle Ages, the Advent season was linked to Christ's birth at Christmas. When you consider the words of the song, O come, O come, Emmanuel, and, cap and ransom captive Israel, that mourns in lowly exile here until the Son of God appears, rejoice, rejoice. Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. When Israel would have been sung, singing the song, it would have been an expectation of Christ's first coming. The church now sings the song in commemoration of that first coming and in expectation of the second coming in the future. So now that our history lesson is over, you ask, why is any of what I just shared with you, why does any of it even matter? Why is it important? I just wanted to remind you all that how we do things may change, but why we do them remains the same. Throughout the ages, Christians have observed, anticipated, and celebrated the coming of Jesus Christ. We look to the past and remember while we are looking to the future with the hope and the anticipation of what is yet to come. Over the course of the next four weeks, we will journey through the scripture readings Passages about Christ's return in judgment, passages about the expectation of the coming Messiah, passages about the announcement of Christ's arrival. I pray that after what, we, what has been a very difficult year for many of us, that we are able to take a moment and remember why we celebrate. I pray that in the weeks ahead, we will see God's promise revealed to us that we will find the hope in the darkness, and that we will be able to continue to, the, to do the work of God here on earth every day. Nothing is impossible with God. What do we know of hope? We know God, and God is hope. In the words of Matthew Kelly, God of hope, I look to you with an open heart and yearning spirit. During this Advent season, I will keep alert and awake, listening for your word and keeping to your precepts. My hope is in you. May the hope of Jesus Christ be in you all. Amen.
art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Truly the Lord's salvation is very near to those who fear him, for his glory may dwell in our land. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and peace shall be a pathway for his feet. We now have the honor to give our gifts and offering.
first week of Advent. Blessings, and I can't wait to see you in person again. Thank you.